Hi and welcome. This is the continuation from the video from yesterday. And this is going to be just about installing call manager and a few things that you need to know. The requirements for call manager 11.5, SU2, SU1, it doesn't matter. You need to have um, DNS record set up. You need to have NTP set up. And I'll go over a couple things that to show you how to test connectivity before the installation even kicks off. I finally made uh, the download of the version 11.5. The latest version was already here and I already made it bootable. So I'm gonna go ahead and install my call manager. Usually what I do is that I come here to my ESXi, come to the data store and put it on the ISO folder. So since at some point I'm gonna be deleting all this stuff again, I'm not gonna do it. But let's see if this thing turned on. Power on. Okay. Already with errors. Now let's see. 10 to 106. Let's make sure we don't have anything that will break our lap right now. As I was telling you the other day, this version is very buggy. All right. So it's on. But it's not on here. So let's close this guy up. And let's try it again. Okay, so yeah, there was something buggy that I was causing it. So let's go and do this. The one that I downloaded yesterday was this one. And I'm going to restart it. And then we're going to go through the installation steps. Hopefully this goes fairly fast. And I'm going to pause and continue every time I see new stuff and when we do new things. Okay, so we just got the first message it says that if we want to do a media test, I'm expecting this is going to fail. And yes, indeed, because we messed up with the checksum that comes already with the ISO by, you know, adding the bootable file on it. So I'm expecting this to restart but well it, I mean to continue so while it does that I'm gonna point out some few things that you need to know so in order to install CUCM it's very important to have few things one of them being the DNS this new version of uh, since version 10 or 10.5 they're very picky about DNS so you need an A record and you need a PTR record. Wait. That didn't come out right. PTR record. You need NTP. You need a default gateway, of course. And you need an IP address. I point out the default gateway because at some point um, I remember using using um, doing some upgrades from six to nine when I started uh, doing stuff with UC. I not always had to have a a reachable default gateway. Of course, I had to enter it, but it it was not reachable because I used to do some crazy stuff, which I'm at some point I'm gonna show you, and, and it may be very useful for you in the future. All right, so 
we got this here so based on the on the hardware specs that we have on the on that, that we brought from the OVA it tells us that we can install call manager all right so let's do next and again there's not much planning here but I'm gonna show you that I already have some information about this call manager I used to have this call manager working before and we have the 10.1.120 network and that 10 is my home's UCM and then I have a reverse lookup zone or a PTR record here under this guy and I don't have it oh it's right here I was looking at the wrong one okay so we're gonna proceed Um, in South Florida so I'm gonna go with the Eastern side of it and this is this always how always leave it to to configure automatically <coughs> which is fine same for the MTU uh, the MTU is one of those things that you really don't think about configuring and you really don't think that will create issues at some point I guess I'm gonna show you when it does create issues now we already have a static IP address that we're gonna assign and we're gonna call this guy home UCM the IP address is 10.120.10 not gonna go fancy with the subnetting or anything I'm just doing a slash 24 here 10 1 1 20 that one and let's just verify that that's true And I'm looking at nope this is downstairs sorry about that it used to be upstairs now it is downstairs and it's this guy right here now for NTP I don't have anything so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell this switch The ten one hundred the one ten the one the one hundred the one is my NTP server. And here I have NTP configure going out to the internet. So we're gonna say NTP server ten the one the one hundred the one. We're gonna make sure that we can ping that guy. And sure enough save the configuration and coming back up here okay dns yes my dns service 10 the one the 110 that 50 i don't have a secondary and i know it's club engineer dot com Oh, let me just uh, show you one thing here. This is the administrator password, username and password for the OS administration. You have two different sets of uh, usernames and passwords. One of them is the, the one that handles everything on the o uh, operating system. And the other one is the application password, which we're going to see at a later point here. So... Center. No, you know what? 
this is IT and this one's data center. I like to do this, I don't know why. But whatever you put here is what your certificate's gonna have. <clears throat> this is the first node. 10.1.100.1. The the Unfortunately, at this point, we cannot test connectivity because it doesn't let us. So I'm gonna show you a, a nice way to do it. The security password is what helps you connect between a publisher and a subscriber or multiple subscribers. They all have to agree on this password so that they can form a relationship between the publisher. So this is the first time you set it up and this is where you set it up. SMTP, we don't wanna do SMTP for this guy. And we are gonna disable call home. And this is where we put the application user. So be, be conscious that you have the operating system administrator and the application user configuration. Usually, and it's a good practice to make them two different usernames. In my case, I'm gonna use the same, just because this is a lab environment and we're not gonna go crazy or complicated. Now it says that at this point, the platform configuration is complete. <coughs> and now this is gonna take probably like two hours, three hours, depending on on the speed of this server. Now, one of the things that I said that I was gonna check was on the networking. At this point, and you know, some of the installations of call manager fail because of access with the uh, network. So I wanna make sure I don't have any of those issues. So I wanna come here to networking and I wanna see that my collab you see is using VLAN 120, which from the switch, I do have VLAN 120, and I do have a VLAN interface 120, which is 10.1.1.21. So that's fine. And then I know that I have three trunk ports connected here. They are connected using a port channel. Nothing fancy, just configure to trunk all the VLANs. Usually in the real world, you just wanna trunk the VLANs that you're gonna use on that EFXI server. Now let's say that you wanna test and you wanna make sure that you have connectivity I'm gonna come here and then to the DNS server that I'm using, I'm just gonna add a new interface. <coughs> and I've seen a lot of people getting stuck on this because they don't know what's going on and they don't know if the VLAN is passing over, if this is the first time they use this VLAN here. So I'm gonna show you a quick trick that I use. <coughs> now I just connected this interface to this server and I should be able to see it coming up here at some point. It is right here. And it's called experimental. Now what I want to do is just give it a, an IP address on the same subnet. So I said it was 101121. So it's 10, 1, 1, 20, and we're gonna give it a 50. 255, 255, 255. I don't wanna put a default gateway. As soon as I put this, I may lose connectivity, depending on your case. So I just wanna be able to establish connectivity on my VLAN and reachability to my default gateway. <coughs> yeah, I don't care about that. And now at this point, if I have connectivity and everything works fine, we're gonna ping 10.1.120.1 and we should receive an answer. There's another quick trick that I wanted to show you before this thing finishes. It's been probably like 
uh, over 30 minutes while it's doing this and I think we already have connectivity so first thing that I want to do it's from my computer remember I'm right here and then I'm gonna go and do this okay so I'm gonna ping 10 that one that one that 20 that 10 and that's the IP address of the call manager now the thing that I want to show you is that if you are unsure that you have connectivity you can do show IP ARP on the switch and if you want to go specific, you can do show IP ARP, include VLAN 120. Make sure capital V so that you can see what you have there. So I have the 50 that I created as a secondary interface on the DNS server, the gateway, and this is the CUCM server. And at this point to me, it looks like it already passed the network confirmation and configuration. So. This, that was another little trick that I think will help you verify connectivity too.